Despite being one of the first models of memory that was proposed, the MSM or the multi-store model received a lot of criticism following its introduction. Okay? Uh, simplification, the inability to observe competence of the model, and the absence of a clear physiological basis are common drawbacks of any model in the cognitive approach. This is regardless of whether it is a model of memory, a model of decision making, or thinking. Okay? They are all, all very simplistic and they cannot necessarily um, be valid in including all the multiple factors involved and the directions involved in cognitive processing. Okay? There are a few specific drawbacks of the MSM itself. Um, the first one is that it primarily focuses only on the structure of memory rather than the processes involved. Um, this is common, honestly, because back in that time, there were two very um, kind of contradicting schools of thought. One was structuralism, which focused, like the word suggests, on trying to understand the structure of behavior and the structure of cognition. So the MSM would fall under this kind of school of thought, whereas functionalism uh, is the opposite of structuralism, which tries, like again, the word suggests, to understand the functions behind cognition and behavior. So the processes that are involved in memory, the processes that are involved in thinking. Okay, um, It is difficult to, or it is redundant or even reductionist to say that each occur without the other. It is important to understand both the structure and process. Uh, and that is where the MSM falls short because its focus has been mostly on the structure. Having said that, the um, original model suggests that the only way to encode information from the short-term memory to long-term memory is through rote rehearsal. Okay, uh, Rote rehearsal being that it's not, uh, you don't focus on the meaning, you just focus on the structure and then you're just saying, Let's say, for example, you have to remember the word um, fundamental, okay? And you just say fundamental, fundamental several times, and that's the rehearsal that you do for it to go into your long-term memory, okay? Um, we know that the levels of processing, which was a result of this uh, criticism, um, suggests that the more deep your understanding and your meaning associated to that piece of information is, the better your um, encoding of that information is into your long term. Okay, And it will stay in your long term longer if you truly understand what it was intending to mean or what it means in relation to your past experiences. Okay, So the next drawback, which is very important, is the fact that the model proposes memory to be a process that involves only flow of information in one direction. Okay, so it's linear, but only in one direction. And we know even from the levels of processing and from schema theory that this is not the case. Okay, we are constantly um, tapping back or referring and retrieving information from our long-term memory for us to understand our current environment. Okay, so for example, to answer the questions in Craig and Telving's research, one needs to retrieve information from the long term. If you're, if you're being asked to um, answer whether a word rhymes with another word, you need to remember syntax, I mean not syntax, you need to remember um, the structure and the phonemics of words from the past. And if you have to remember the meaning of the word, you need to tap back to what you have associated that word to mean with in your long term memory already. Okay. So in that essence, the flow of information is not one directional, rather it is bi-directional. Okay? It happens from the sensory register to the long-term memory, but also from the long-term memory to the short-term memory. Okay? And at this point, this is where the working memory model comes into play. Um, it suggests that the MSM is too basic in discussing um, both the long-term memory and short-term memory as unitary stores. Unitary stores basically meaning that there's just one store responsible for all kinds of information and all kinds of memory. Okay, But the truth is that the long-term memory is not a unitary store. It has several different types of memory. Okay, There's episodic memory, which is memory of events. There's procedural memory, which is 
how to do things, okay, do it yourself kind of uh, memories, and then there's semantic memory, which is general meaningful knowledge, okay, and the evidence for there being different stores of information or memory is that when an individual experiences brain damage or has like a stroke and there's following repercussions on the memory, there are times when, let's say, for example, an individual remembers how to cook but will not be able to remember what happened on their 22nd birthday, okay, or what their parents' names were. So because there are different systems, it is possible then that the damage only can affect one's one system, okay? That means your memory can be intact for procedural memory. You can remember how to drive a car. You can remember how to cook. You can remember how to play a cello, okay? But not remember what happened on your 26th birthday or on your first vacation abroad, okay? So this is the argument, the argument with the long-term memory being non-unitary. And with the short-term being non-unitary, um, the, like I said, the criticism was the same. Uh, it is too simplistic and it has um, uh, Badley and Hitch go on to propose the working memory model that suggests that there are different components involved in the short term itself. Okay, So with that, I want you to go into an activity. Okay, The first part of the activity involves a Padlet. You are going to answer whether you believe that multitasking is a myth or it can actually occur, that we are capable as human beings to multitask, okay? Um, the questions are specific to your experience with using uh, listening to music while studying. Um, so you will go to Padlet. And you will answer these questions on the Padlet personally first, okay? And take about 10 minutes to do this. Once you have answered these questions that I've put up on Padlet, you will get into your groups. I think it will be time for break by then. But after the five minute break, you will get into groups, okay? And you will make a research proposal for how you can study or rather uh, the effect of multitasking on memory recall, okay? So is it going to enhance memory? Is it going to deteriorate memory? You need to come up with your own procedure, okay, to study that. And you will put it in this format. If we have come across and we've made proposals for research before, but you will use this format to... Um, do your research proposal for the same task, okay? So you will have the research title and the question, you will have the aim, the researcher's year, the independent variable and the dependent variable, okay? I want you to be as detailed as possible. There's the research hypothesis, what do you think would happen? And there's the null hypothesis, which is that there would be nothing that will happen. Who would be your participants? How would you sample them? The research method and design. Are you going to use experiments, correlational study? It is, it is highly likely that it will be experimental, but in that case, is it going to be matched pairs? Is it going to be independent measures design um, or repeated measures design? Then you will outline the procedure again in details, okay? And mm, potentially some ethical considerations, okay? Once you have decided all of this, one of your group members is going to record themselves explaining it, Okay, and then they will post it again back on Padlet, which I will go through as you then will go into the final lecture for this, uh, the models of memory unit or chapter. Okay.